I'm Mary Beth. Welcome to Paddle Adventure YouTube channel. Today, we are going to be talking about Rockwood Conservation Area. This Southern Ontario Conservation Area is part of the Grand River Conservation Authority. Rockwood is located on the ancestral lands of Haudenosaunee, Attawandaronk, Anishinaabewaki, Mississauga, and the Mississauga of Credit First Nation. Rockwood has a unique geological history that has left it with glacier bluffs, potholes, and caves. These bluffs were formed in the recent ice age, which ended 11,000 to 16,000 years ago. These bluffs range from 5 to 30 meters deep and 7 to 200 meters wide. At Rockwood Conservation Area, you can hike to explore these glacier bluffs or paddle in and around these rock formations and towering cliffs. The Rockwood Reservoir is part of the Aramasa River, which runs through Wellington County in southern Ontario, starting in Erin and flowing through the city of Guelph until it reaches the Speed River. John Harris settled in Rockwood in 1821 and built the first mill on the Aramasa River. Today, you can still see these ruins at the conservation area. However, unfortunately, you can no longer access the historic mill buildings, but you can still enjoy them outside of the fence and walk to the dam. Rockwood Conservation Area is a great spot to go and spend an afternoon or even the day and is loaded with activities. It's open all year round, closed December 24th to 26th, with camping available May 1st to October 15th and day use open daily from 8 a.m. till 8.30 p.m. You pull in at the main gate here off of Fall Street and you stop and a parking tenant will come out to pay for admission, answer some questions, check you in for camping. This will also tell you if there's a tenant on duty or not and whether you can pay at the main gate or if you need to pay via an envelope. So if there's not an attendant on duty, this is where you get the envelopes here for the payment and you drop it just over here. An adult day pass is $7.75, which includes tax. There's also rates for children's, seniors, and groups. Yearly membership, which lets you into all of the Grand River Conservation Areas, unlimited for a year for $145. You can pick up one of these maps on your way in or it is also available online, link below. Before you plan your visit, be sure to check the link to the conservation area below for up-to-date pricing and information on what facilities and activities are open when you plan to go. As soon as you get to the main gate, you come to a fork in the road. This way is towards the water and the picnic area, group sites, the beach, the mill ruins this way, but that parking usually gets full and there'll be a sign out here that'll say that it is too full to park that way. Let's get into the details for paddling. There are three places that you can put in your watercraft. The first launch location is the beach. This is the parking up top above the beach. It's the largest day use parking lot and the closest one to the beach. And you can see that there's a nice paved path down to that pavilion. Sometimes they serve snacks and everything there. And from inside the pavilion, it's got a good overview of where the beach is, just down there. And you can see the stairways or you can see the winding ramp to make it more accessible. Upon driving into the conservation area, you can request and tell the staff that you would like to drive closer to the beach to unload your board and equipment. However, you will need to park further back up the hill and walk down. At the second fork in the road, heading right, it shows that it's only campsites and that's where you want to head if you're going to just drop off your board. Often there's a sign here that says no parking because a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to go down there and park and whatnot and you can't. Sometimes you'll even see a conservation attendant. Just let them know that I want to launch my kayak, my paddleboard, and I want to put everything down there and then come back up here to park. If you're going to park and walk everything down to the beach, you'll want to hang left and there's signs for parking and signs for the swim sign for the beach. This launch location is the easiest and most friendly, but the beach is also the busiest part of the conservation area. On the beach, you can see that you can launch either to the right, which is right here, or to the left of the swimming area. To the left of the swimming area is where the canoe and paddle boats are located for rent. 
This is the road that comes down from the main gate. The beach is right here. You can see that it is blocked up. You can't park. Often though, like I said, they'll let you bring your gear down, drop it, and then go back up. There is a car parked here. However, keep in mind that this is an accessibility parking spot. There's lots of picnic tables, trees, and space on the beach and the lawn to gear up, get ready, or have a nice apres paddle picnic. There's lots of great areas to picnic afterwards or before. The second location is just south of the beach along the water's edge. The launch is beside the footpath just over the bridge beside the group picnic area mark number four on the map. This launch spot, water's edge, is more difficult as it's a rocky entrance. But you can launch here if the beach is really busy and it's really difficult. If you are going to choose this one, I suggest you put your fin in first so that it's not hitting the rocks and it's easier to get in. Similar to the beach, drop your equipment off and park up top so you're not having to haul everything down. If you're lucky, you might be allowed to park at the group site if it's not busy. Ask the conservation area staff when you arrive. Another plus to this area, not only are there washrooms right there, but there's a tap for water. The third location to launch is by far the most popular spot to launch because of the accessibility from the parking lot to the launch, as well as the launch spot itself. This is Harris Woolen Mills Ruins parking lot, which is located to the only illustration of a canoe launch on the Rockwood map. As you can see, this parking lot isn't very big, so it does fill up, but Rockwood Conservation Area will have signs up top before driving down here that this lot is full. Keep in mind that the parking lot down at the mill has a very steep and windy road that is not maintained in the winter season. And this parking has the porta potties, but there's washroom facilities throughout the conservation area. The weather. This location offers a little bit of shelter if the winds are strong. Keep in mind that the winds can be strong when it's channeling through the reservoir if the wind direction is either coming from the north or the south. This is great because it's windy out in the main bigger area and then there's little inlets like this that are just absolutely glassy. Because of the limited parking, it's tricky to plan this paddle so you're paddling into the wind first and cruising on the way back. Just note wherever you're launching from, if it's a nice ride going, that you will have a wind on the way back. It's important to check the wind and know your abilities to paddle within it. Links on how to read the wind below. The route. It's not a very big place and you can comfortably paddle the entire reservoir. Paddling around the perimeter and checking out all the little alcoves is approximately two kilometers to two and a half kilometers total. You can get close to the dam, but keep in mind it does get shallow the closer you get to the dam. There's tons of birds, wildlife, spiders in and around the rocks. I've also seen fossils. So it's a great spot to just go sit, check out the scenery, find all of those little things and enjoy yourself. Tips, watch for rocks as well as sunken logs and sunken trunks that will snag your fin if you're paddle boarding. Bring a camera. It's a unique and beautiful spot for Southern Ontario and lots of cool shots with the rock walls. Plan a full afternoon or a day and look into doing more things than just paddling. There's hikes to caves. The Cedar Ridge Trail will take you to the caves or it'll take you along the southeastern side of the Aramos River, the reservoir that is Rockward Conservation Area. We're gonna go check out the caves. Tons of great hiking in this area. I'm not really dressed for hiking with my thong flip-flops, but we're gonna at least go see the caves because it's a really accessible path. For obvious reasons, going into the caves is not. The caves go really far back, and if you're looking for a great way to cool down but don't want to get wet, head to the caves. Nature's air conditioning. And around the perimeter itself, you can walk from the mill parking lot to the dam. You can hear it, check it out. This trail here will lead you on the north side of the Aramosa River to the dam, and then you can continue all the way around and loop back. You can see all the hiking trails along the water's edge. 
the trail around has some great views too. You can see up there. It's a great spot for an apre paddle picnic. Tons of picnic tables all over Rockwood, inside the pavilion, up in and around the trees. Rockwood Conservation offers group picnic shelters, reservation required. There's a mini golf course that's roughly three to five dollars. You can go swimming, camping that's roughly between 40 to 55 dollars per night, fishing, plus a playground, and if you don't own a self power watercraft, you can rent. They have canoes and paddle boats, which is not a stand up paddleboard. Rentals are $25 per hour plus a $50 deposit. First, then the 50 just after. Washrooms are on site, including the pavilion that's close to the beach, porta potties at the Harris Woolen Mills Ruins parking lot, as well as at the group sites and around the conservation area. Check the map for more details. If you want to bring your dog out to adventure, they are allowed in the conservation area. However, they need to be on a leash for the duration of your visit. If you're planning to go on a nice, warm, sunny, hot day, especially on the weekends, be sure to go early to avoid the lineups or wait to get into the conservation area. Lots of signs like the one out front, the one right here where it says that parking does get full. So make sure if you're coming in the summertime, especially on the weekends, that you get here in good time. Plus the chances of getting the better parking for paddling, especially with a kayak, at the Harris Woolen Mills Ruins parking lot is a bigger chance. See below link for the Rockwood Conservation Area for more details on what activities are offered, times and pricing. Overall, this is a beautiful, unique location for Southern Ontario that's not a big paddle and it's great for beginners. Plus, Rockwood Conservation Area offers loads of other activities beyond paddling. It is definitely worth either an afternoon or a day trip. Let me know in the comments if you've been to Rockwood Conservation Area or are planning to and have any questions. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more tips, travel, and adventures. And until next time, happy adventuring.